Uh, thanks, Roz, for the kind introduction. As this is a recording, I assume it was a kind introduction, but we'll go with that. co-head of the Department of Nuclear Medicine at the Children's Hospital at Westmead, and I'm also affiliated with the Discipline of Medical Imaging Science at the University of Sydney. So it's a, a pleasure to be invited to speak about current and emerging applications of total CT <coughs> as it pertains to paediatrics. I have no financial disclosures, sadly, and I would like to take this opportunity to uh, apologise to Stephen Fernando for not being uh, able to present there in person, and um, I very much appreciate the opportunity to present virtually in this important symposium. Uh, for those of you that may not be aware, uh, the Westmead Children's Hospital shares a PET-CT facility with Westmead Adult Hospital. And the staff from the Children's Hospital uh, walk up the corridor and take control of the, the, the PET facility on one day a week to perform the, the paediatric scans. Um, I've put on the screen there um, a standard work list, um, and I will use this uh, as a basis to show a few cases that I think illustrate quite nicely where I see the um, enhancements of PET, total body PET CT are for paediatric imaging specifically. Uh, the first patient is an eight-month-old male with biopsy-proven skull Langerhans cell histiocytosis and a staging FDG PET-CT study was performed. Um, the rotating MIP image on the left shows focal uptake on multiple sites peripherally in the calvarium with on the axial views localised to these lytic lesions uh, at multiple sites confirming polyostotic disease. For this patient, the issue was not the uh, scan findings per se, but what was required to achieve a good quality scan of this nature. Um, the patient required oral uh, conscious sedation with chloral hydrate, vomited the first dose, and then needed another dose to be administered to achieve adequate sedation. Um, th this is where the fast scan acquisition of total body PET could have real advantages, in that um, uh, and some of the examples I'll show later from the literature show that very, very quick scanning can be performed in paediatrics that may obviate the need for the requirement of general anaesthetic or um, sedation. Um, clearly a, a very strong advantage in paediatric patients. So this patient is a two-year-old uh, with pyrexia of unknown origin on a background of severe combined immunodeficiency. Um, the FDG PET-CT scan shows marked abnormal uptake through, throughout the bone marrow spaces of the axial and appendicular skeleton. There's some urinary contamination within the, the nappy um, and also an intensely FDG avid pulmonary mass in the right lung, indica indicated by the arrows uh, on the images now. Um, the patient went on to have uh, image-guided biopsy of both the, um, the, the right lung mass and also um, uh, one of the bone marrow spaces, which revealing a microbacterium species. So in this way, the, the PET was able to guide biopsy planning of an atypical infection related to a, a two-year-old with an immunodeficiency. The next patient is a nine-year-old female with pyrexia and positive blood cultures growing staph aureus. She undertook an FDG PET-CT scan utilising measures to suppress myocardial activity involving a prolonged fast, low-carbohydrate diet and IV heparin prior to the FDG injection. The FDG scan shows some trace adhering to the central line, but there's also a focus centrally within the, the thorax. Uh, the focal uptake in the thorax on, on the axial was confirmed to lie near the base of the heart um, and further imaging confirmed a mitral valve vegetation and following treatment for infective endocarditis the patient uh, recovered. I mean, these last two examples are of uh, PET-CT imaging in uh, evaluation of pyrexia of unknown origin or suspected uh, focal infections. And these can often be in patients that are unstable 
uh, particularly requiring ICU involvement. And the ability to, form, to perform fast scans on these patients is, is clearly an advantage, and in particular in the paediatric space where um, sedation can, can often be not possible. The next patient is a five-year-old boy with uh, previous treatment for a malignant rhabdoid tumour of the bladder. And an FDG scan was done several months after the end of treatment to evaluate for possible tumour recurrence. The FDG scan uh, shown there shows a, a normal distribution with no abnormal activity. So it's a normal scan with no evidence of sarcoma recurrence. Um, you know, well, why is this an example of a paediatric patient that would benefit from total body PET. Well, clearly, the role of FDG PET in surveillance, um, particularly in paediatric malignancies, is something that uh, is quite controversial. But if these scans can be performed um, with very low radiation burden to the patient, it's likely they can be incorporated into the follow-up uh, protocols um, of patients after treatment for various solid tumours. I'm just going to briefly highlight two new traces that uh, are, are really on the horizon for us to get our hands on and to use in some of our patients here uh, in conjunction with the, the total body PET system in the future. Fluorinated MFBG is a uh, fluorinating labelled equivalent of MIBG and will become critically important for uh, scanning paediatric patients with neuroblastoma. Um, this is a case report coming out of Copenhagen of a nine-month-old boy with a massive thoracic neuroblastoma that had such a large uh, thoracic tumour that they were unable to undergo a general anaesthetic or have sedation, and therefore a M MFBG PET-CT scan was performed in an extended field of view PET-CT system um, very quickly with a 10-minute acquisition that the, the patient did not need any sedation for. Um, the authors comment that a, a two-minute reconstruction of the list mode data provided clinically useful information, so there is scope to perform scans even, even faster than that. Gallium 68 FAPI is of considerable interest, and um, most of us would be familiar with this image that was published a few years ago showing the avidity of um, FAPI in multiple solid tumours in, in adult patients, and its by distribution um, certainly lends itself to being a uh, viable theranostic uh, option for the future. Where this relates to paediatrics is that there has been a published case of uh, gallium-68 FAPI used in a 15-year-old girl with a non-oncologic but a connective tissue inflammatory disorder, um, showing that it can be used in paediatrics with <laughs> diagnostic advantage and may even open up to have non-oncologic indications. Um, I'll now be moving on to talk about the study that we've started uh, on the total body PET CT st uh, system here at the NIF. I mean, we're studying same day dual radio pharmaceutical paediatric total body PET CT imaging, um, and I'm presenting on behalf of myself and my co investigators, Peter Kinch from the discipline of medical imaging science, and also Hona Curtis from Image X. I definitely want to have a quick plug for the Sydney Imaging Pilot Seed Funding Scheme for which uh, we were lucky enough to receive grant funding to commence our feasibility study, so I thank you for that. So what is our scan uh, involving? Well, the eligibility criteria for the patients involved are going to be those paediatric patients undergoing an FDG PET <coughs> and a gallium-68 dotatate PET as part of their routine clinical care, and primarily these can constitute um, uh, children with metastatic neuroblastoma that are undergoing workup towards lutate. Uh, the patients enrolled on the study have their standard clinical care um, FDG PET and gallium-68 dotatate PET-CTs performed on the clinical standard field of view scanner at Westmead Children's Hospital, you know, uh, uh, not on the same day. But the research component um, will occur when on the same day of the FDG clinical scan, the patients will travel to Royal North Shore Hospital and have a total body PET-CT acquisition um, on the total body PET system. Um, that would constitute a, a delayed FDG scan um, several half-lives after the tracer was injected and quickly followed by 
another injection of gallium-68 dotatate with a dynamic scan acquisition for approximately 45 minutes. So the objectives and outcome measures we are going to be um, aiming to achieve include evaluating the diagnostic accuracy in any incremental activity we uh, are able to achieve from a delayed FDG scan acquisition. We're also going to be simulating low-dose studies um, using the re reprocessing of the LISMO data on the total body system, and also investigating non-CT-based attenuation correction using the uh, lutetium background radiation emitted from the from the uh, the PET crystal on the total body PET system. Um, the gallium dotatate part uh, will be uh, using a dynamic acquisition for which we will try to um, evaluate tumor kinetics for any incremental diagnostic value, and also investigate the, the feasibility of performing uh, same-day dual tracer imaging with an FDG scan first, followed by a gallium-68 dotatate scan on, on the same day. This has significant advantages for pediatric patients to avoid you know, multiple visits um, for uh, what can be quite long scan acquisitions for, for quite sick patients. Uh, this is the type of patient that will be enrolled on the study. Um, these are images of a six-year-old boy with re relapsed or refractory neuroblastoma. Um, on the left-hand side is the MIBG scan showing the metastatic disease within the skull. Um, the subsequent um, FDG and dotatate scans show how extensive that the uh, calvarial metastases are. And the patient also has a nodal met in the neck and one that's a bit harder to see within the abdomen. And this patient went on to have uh, lutate therapy, and here I uh, just show for completeness the dosimetry scans performed up to 48 hours after the lutate was administered. Uh, this slide was provided by Steve Meikle as part of one of his talks on the NIF website in the Australian National Total Body PET webinar series. Um, and he provided it really to, to highlight that um, other centres have also described the use of total body PET for imaging low-dose, very quick scans in paediatric patients. This one, interestingly, having endocarditis similar to the patient that I, I presented in, in my talk. Uh, we made it to the summary slide. So the, the, the points that I'd like to emphasise are is that um, clearly dose reduction and faster scan times uh, are important uh, advantages of total body PET-CT systems which have direct relevance for paediatrics. The other uh, enhancements that total body PET offers which uh, are not so specific for PEDS but also provide benefit are the enhanced sensitivity for which delayed imaging is um, enabled. Total body imaging for evaluation of tumour kinetics, which I haven't spoken about, but which will probably be addressed at the symposium. And the new traces that I described clearly are not just uh, relevant for total body systems, but can also be employed in standard field of view uh, PET-CT systems as well. Now, the, the two killer reasons for total body PET-CT are those of dose reduction and faster scan times in children. But the dose reduction is not just to limit radiation exposure to the patients for the sake of it. Once the radiation burden becomes extremely low, it opens a door for more non-oncologic conditions uh, to receive PET-CT imaging. Really will pave the way for ongoing surveillance imaging uh, for patients previously treated for solid tumours. And clearly, I think non-CT based attenuation correction may form a, a part of this to bring the radiation levels down extremely low. And once the, the radiation burden is, is low, it will certainly enhance research opportunities, which has been the major problem for enrolling uh, paediatric patients in clinical trials. The faster scan times uh, are not just for the convenience of the patients, but within the paediatric setting would reduce the amount of general anaesthetic and sedation required, which is a major barrier uh, to uh, enrolling patients, uh, children that is, on, on clinical trials. And um, I have this, this idea that real-time motion detection can be part of this, where, where a, a, a baby will be injected with a tracer, placed in, in the scanner, with real-time motion detection occurring, so that an epoch of maybe a minute of the patient being still can be uh, detected, the, the ping goes off and the patient can get off as the scan has been successfully acquired. Um, and we haven't really had time to go into uh, AI or deep learning reconstruction techniques, with may, which may be part of the motion detection and um, enhancing the scan times of total body pain.
So with that, I'll leave it there, and I hope to hang around um, in uh, the real sense uh, to answer any questions, if there are any. Thank you.